Thanks for checking out this unboxing video. This is the July Snacku box. Snacku? Am I putting? Yeah, I'm putting it right. Always comes in the same looking box. Um, this is, theme for this one is Tokyo. Uh, I believe they've done Tokyo before, uh, so this is their second round with it. But the first time they did Tokyo, I was not subscribing to this box, so I'm excited to taste some Tokyo. Sounds kind of weird, but. Um, Sorry, my energy level may not be exactly the same. I literally like just woke up, so this is like the first thing I'm doing. Um, so this is my breakfast, actually. And that's part of the reason I did it first thing, because I was like, there was, yesterday I wanted to shoot it, but I ate a little too much for breakfast, so like all day I was just kind of like, I just don't feel hungry to try these snacks. So this is my breakfast then. See how that goes. All right, so when you open it up, it's got the little card that always comes with it packaging show you what it looks like under the packaging if you can see a few things yeah check that out all right um so like i said uh, the focus is tokyo uh i'll just read the thing the extremely popular tokyo box from snacku is here there are so many amazing snacks from tokyo that due to popular demand we just had to revisit Tokyo for a third time. Okay, I was wrong, not second time, this is the third time. Uh, the trick to exploring Tokyo is to venture off the main paths and explore the lesser known parts of the city. The same goes for the snacks. The popular ones are great, but the real gems are from the stores that only locals know about. This month we feature a variety of fun snacks from boutique shops in Tokyo. Um, first of all, there's the artwork on the front, and then here's the card if you wanna Pause on that and read it. There you go. Put that aside. Oh, no, I don't want to put that aside because I want to read what we're doing. Okay, so the first thing, I'm just going to grab this thing on top, which we have two of them. I'm going to put one of them down here because, you know, I like to share with my wife if you've seen these before. So this is, okay, this is the sugar butter sandwich. You can take a look there. Let's see how well I can show you. Sugar butter sandwich for the packaging. Uh, a hit snack in Tokyo, crispy barley wheat puff cookies filled with a mildly sweet milky white chocolate cream. Does that mean white chocolate? Milky white, white chocolate cream, I guess. Or is it just white, but chocolate in there? We'll find out. So how it looks. It doesn't look very inviting to be honest. It kind of looks very plain. You can see the cream in there. It smells relatively sweet. Like very sugary. There's a little bit like hint of like a vanilla coming off it. it smells decent. They're pretty good. It does taste milky. That is interesting. I know that was one of the descriptors. I definitely get that kind of like 1% like thicker milk or like whole milk, like thick milk flavor. That is going pretty well actually with the sweetness and like the sugariness of like the uh, outside cookie and that white chocolate. It definitely is like white chocolate. I'm usually not big on white chocolate but presented like this, pretty good. That was a good breakfast. Hmm. Yeah. I'm. Hmm. So the like the cookie portion on the outside, just kind of is giving it a little bit of a cereal note, like a raw cereal, like Naked Cheerios, and it's giving it a crunch because you can see like how brittle it is. So it's giving it like a nice crunch. Um, but it's really kind of insane to me how strong that milk note is in there. But it's good, especially for breakfast this morning. Um, I like it. That's actually pretty good. I, when I first saw it, I was just like, eh, this looks a little plain. Uh, I don't know. Okay, I'm going to grab this thing. Oh, I think I think this might be an emo cake. Emo cake which I may have had before out of this box. 
go. Yes, I believe it's an emo cake. Um, very popular soft cakes filled with either sweet potato or purple ube potato from Kagoshima. So what does it look like? It looks kind of like a turd. Or like a brownish reddish potato. That's kind of what it looks like. There's potato in there. So the outside cake tastes like like red bean, which is good. I like it. I always say it's kind of like a little bit like fig, but not quite like more sweet version of like fig. And then you can get that purple potato in the middle, which is just like, it has a little bit of that potato character. It's a little bit, um, I mean, it's a little bit, it's really starchy. I like the bit of red bean flavor in there, but overall, eh. Not the biggest fan of that one. It's okay. Mm. I have water for these things. Otherwise, it's going to go poorly. Um, some of these things. So here, here are some, they added, uh, it actually even says on here, Japanese candy assortment. So there's just like some extra candies in here. I'm not gonna taste these because I've done them on previous unboxings. So I'm assuming these are just like extras that they put in. I can tell you what I think of them though. They're, this one's like a milk candy. Um, it's just a hard candy that literally tastes like milk. Uh, actually pretty good. I remember having, when I had this, it has a lot of milk flavor to it as it should since it's a milk candy, but it kind of tastes a little bit caramelly, not like super caramel, it's just kind of like caramel light. That's good. I actually like that. Uh, this was just in the last pack. Um, the Ramune, Ramun um, candies. This is basically just like a tightly packed powder that is supposed to taste like the soda, the popular soda in Japan, Ramun or Ramune. Um, so that's what this is all about. Uh, pretty good. I mean, if you like super sugary things. Uh, then this was this cider candy that was from a few packs ago. It's literally called cider candy. It's on the back, as you can see. Uh, it did kind of taste like apple cider. It had like a little bit of an effervescence to it, so it kind of tasted a little bit like a sparkling apple cider. This is good. Of the candies in there, this was probably my favorite. It's sweet, but it's not like crazy sweet in it. <clears throat> Excuse me, and it has like a nice apple flavor. So I'm down with those. Next, what is this one? This might be the Okashi. My guess. I gotta open it first to figure to mash it up. <laughs> yeah, I believe that's what this is. Yeah. So I think there might be a few more savory items in this. If you've been watching my other unboxings for this, I want mainly savory stuff. Well, I mean not mainly. I know that when you get a snack box. There's going to be a lot of sweet stuff in there, but I just kind of want more savory stuff because there hasn't been a whole lot. So this might actually be, but let's read it. That thing. Kaminari Okoshi. Uh, these snacks originated in Osaka hundreds of, hundreds of years ago when farmers offered them to the deities to pray for a good rice harvest. It's traditionally made with crushed rice millet and infused with ginger and other grains. This actually has ginger. That might be pretty good. Yeah, I'm not hard. Ooh, I do taste the ginger. There's a quick kick of it right up front. It's got like a real sweet kind of honey coating on the outside. That um, yeah, it like really hits your palate really fast because it is so sweet. But it also has it has the ginger that comes in right after that kind of like sweet honey note. It's very cereally because it's like the puff rice. But then it also has a little bit of like a soy sauce note to it. You can see. It's good. I like that. I think I might like it a little more with less of that honey sweetness on it though. That might be a little bit better, but it is good. I do enjoy it. I really like that touch of ginger in there. I haven't been big into ginger in my life until like the past... 
I don't know, like year, year and a half, I've started to actually get into ginger. I enjoy it. So that sugar butter sandwich, was the, which was the first thing I did, that is one of the three featured snacks that's actually from Japan. These other snacks I've been doing are just from other areas, which you can tell from, you know, the descriptions that I was reading you. But I'll point out the other two when I get to them, that those are the Tokyo ones. Did I say Japan? I meant Tokyo. I don't know. I'm too tired. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So, are these the Rusks? Wait, what is this? I don't... Oh, this is the Slim Bunchy or Wasabi Crackers. I don't think I got the wasabi version. I should drink some water because of the ginger flavor. I really throw things off when you're trying other things. Alright. So, which one will you get? The bite-sized rice crackers, slightly seasoned and salted... Or the spicy mini cracker and peanut trail mix covered in wasabi powder. So I don't think it's the wasabi one. But then again, I can't really read this. So I'm sure. I think maybe the smell will kick it up. We'll tip it up. No, I don't think it's the wasabi one. We'll try it. But I'm excited because it's like, this is a savory one. Oh man, these could be really awesome for me. Slim Bunchy. Yeah, they just look like super puffed, like little rice cakey things. Mm. Yes, this is what I'm talking about. This is my wheelhouse right here. Okay, yeah, like puffed rice thing, like super crunchy. Ooh, this kind of has like a garlic flavor to it. It's salty, it's garlicky. It's got like a, a soy sauce coating on the outside that tastes really good. A little bit of sweetness to it too. Yeah, is that garlic? That's supposed to be lightly seasoned and salted. Okay, so we don't really necessarily know what the seasonings would be, but I'm telling you, it's a little garlicky. Dude. Okay. I'm not gonna, for the sake of this video, I'm not gonna eat another one right now, but I want to. These are really good. I like these a lot. Right. Mm. Yes. Yes. That's that's a home run in this box for me. Mm. And I'm glad it's in a relatively large uh, bag. I actually might look online to see if I can buy more of that stuff. That's me. All right. <clears throat> I'm not going to do that one right now. because that's Okay. Gudon Waffle. Waffle. This is one of the Tokyo ones. The Guden, Gudon waffle. No, you're not going to be able to read like anything on that. Well, well, there isn't anything written on it, so that makes sense. So it's a, it says Tokyo chocolate waffle sand. I don't understand the sand, but oh, sandwich. Okay, short for sandwich. Gudon waffles. Uh, these milk chocolate covered waffle sandwich cookies are a huge hit in Tokyo and were inspired by a treat from the Netherlands. Gudon waffles is Dutch for golden waffles. That makes sense. And since waffle snacks originated in the town of Gouda, Netherlands, this snack is cleverly named Gouden waffles. No, yeah, that's really that clever, but... <clears throat> I'd say more aptly named, not cleverly named. Okay, so it says chocolate covered, but you don't really see the chocolate covering on the outside you can kind of see that it's on the inside. Like, see, you can see it around, like, the edges. And then when you try and, like, let's see, get the right angle. Yeah, you can see here that it's, like, in the inside. <clears throat> Might be kind of cooler aesthetically if it's on the outside, but I don't know if that would really affect the taste. The outside tastes like a sugary, crispy waffle. And the inside... Tastes like chocolate. Hmm. It's like a good milk chocolate. Almost slightly fudgy though too, which is nice because I like when it's like a little deeper, darker, richer note to chocolate. It's good. <clears throat> that is good. I like that. That's tasty. 
Can't really argue with it. It's a chocolate waffle. Who doesn't like a chocolate waffle? Mm. It just reminds me of like those chocolate dipped waffle cones that you get, can get ice cream in. It's kind of like that. Um, it's good. All right, next, this is Fukura Okoji, uh, a rice grain senbai glazed lightly with soy sauce, then baked in a clay kiln. Sounds like it's gonna be my thing. Sounds exciting. Another savory ordeal. I feel like some of these little like puff rice things kind of like come off. So they're like rolling around in the packaging, trying not to. All right. So there you go. I assume the those streaks on there, the brown streaks are the soy sauce that they put on there. Ooh, it smells like soy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good. I don't think it's as good as the, let me reference this, Slim Bonchi, but not too far behind. Mm. Mm. There's a decent saltiness to this that is really doing me right at the moment. I'm liking that saltiness. You get a lot of that soy, and then that cereal note from the puffed rice. Um, got a lot of crunch to it. As I don't know if you can hear that or not. But there's a lot of crunch to it. That's good. I like that. Good. I think we're down to the last thing. Yeah, this is the last one. Oh, a little piece of puffed rice that fell out. I need it now. All right. So I'm on my last thing, and this is the third and final Tokyo snack. More water. Mm. Okay. So this is Tokyo Rusk. I've heard of Rusk. I'm not 100% familiar with what Rusk is. It always kind of looked like a like a butter almond cookie to me. So I guess we'll find out if I'm right based off the description. But it says premium almond Rusk. Tokyo Rusk, you can see. In the back. Okay. So it says almond Tokyo Rusk. Rusks are a popular type of snack that you see in Japan, but rarely found, but are rarely, it's not very well written, but rarely found anywhere else. It's basically a crispy, twice-baked piece of baguette, okay, interesting, oh, similar to biscotti, those are two different things, but whatever, uh, topped with sugar, cream, or frosting. We've included almond rusks from the popular Tokyo Rusk Shop. Sure. Let's get in this. This will be the first time. Ha oh, yeah, yeah. I see. So it's not like biscotti, and it is like a baguette because this is what you were seeing in the package, but this is what you see on the other side like, literally a piece of like baguette bread. So that is interesting. So it just really looks like it's like a thin, dried out piece of baguette with like a honey almond um, mixture layered on top. Actually, it looks maybe a little caramelized, too, so let's give this a shot. I'll put this over here. Very crunchy. Hmm. Yeah. Almondy. Sugary. Like brown sugar, actually. So it is like a little caramelly, but it's a little more toward brown sugar. Because you know you can make your own caramel with brown sugar and butter on the stovetop. So there's this moment... Like in between where like the brown sugar and the almond, or oh, the brown sugar and the caramel, like it's making the transition to caramel. So that like kind of like in between flavor. Mm. So the baguette portion of it makes it crunchy, but also like a little bit fluffy because it's not too crazy crunchy. It's not too dried out. And it's just like a nice, like sweet, Brown sugary, caramelly, almond, a little bit of touch of honey topping to it. It's, let me put that in the thing. It's good. It's nice. I like that. That's tasty. But it's more of like a, like an easy, easy going type snack. 
All right, so uh, what do I like the most? I'm actually not going to pull up the individual things there. So the uh, probably my least favorite thing is that emo cake, the the like potato in the, like the red bean chocolate thing. That's probably my least favorite. My favorite, I can actually grab this, the Slim Bunchy. That is awesome. Those are really, really, really tasty. And right behind that is this little dude, the uh, Fukuro Koji. Uh, that's really good too. I'm going to have a good time finishing those off for breakfast. Um, but I really was surprised by the rusk. That rusk is really nice. Like I said, it's the first time I've ever had a rusk. Good. Like, very tasty. Uh, and the waffles are good. Like, you can't miss with chocolate-covered waffles. So, um, yeah, and those were... Oh, and the Kaminari Okoshi was pretty good. With that touch of ginger. I'm going to re-show you that one. Yeah, this one with the touch of ginger in there and, like, a little bit of honey, like, puff rice. So... There are a lot more savory elements in this box, so for that reason, I think I this might be my favorite box, or at least close to my favorite box, because there's more savory to it, and I love the savory stuff. So, uh, I feel like for a tasting box, for a tasting box, that's $15.75, including shipping and handling, all that stuff, tax, it's, you get a good amount of stuff, I feel like, for it just being a tasting box. Um, so... Always happy with Snacku, uh, even when I had the matcha one last month, and I'm not big into matcha. There was some stuff in there that kind of surprised me, so if you haven't seen that unboxing, go check it out. Um, but this is nice. This is good. Snacku, keep doing what you're doing. Um, continue with more savory stuff, please. Uh, get some good senbai in there. I love, love, love some like nice, very soy saucy senbai. That's my wheelhouse. Uh, but anyway, thank you everyone for checking this out. If you wouldn't mind, please um, subscribe to the channel. Uh, it really helps me out a lot. It doesn't take you a whole lot of time. You just click a thing real quick. So it would be really, really helpful. Um, if you have friends and family, you could get to subscribe. That would be cool too. And then you can always leave comments down there and we can talk about, you know, what do you like as far as snacks go, Japanese or otherwise. And uh, we can talk. But anyway, thank you for checking this out. Uh, thank you, Snacku, for doing what you do. And until next time, keep it brutal. I'm going to have breakfast, the rest of this box.